This week in Louisville, KET hosted a town hall forum centered on our new documentary, Dropping Back In, addressing those in our area without high school degrees. Among our partners in this American graduate initiative, Kentuckiana Works, whose executive director, Michael Gritton, joins us now. Good to see you. Great to be here. First of all, explain what Kentuckiana Works is and how it works in the community. So Kentuckiana Works is the workforce development agency for the seven county region with Louisville at its heart. Federal money from lots of different sources, 10 or $11 million a year, really all dedicated toward helping people get a job, raise their skills, go back to school. We have a youth career center that works with kids that have dropped out of high school, so we get a chance to talk more about that. But it's various ways that people, we're using tax dollars to try to help people get their skills up so they can get on that ladder and start moving up. How is Kentucky and Works involved with KET series? Well, what's great is I think we were one of, we were one of the sponsors. We, we fund this youth career center that targets kids that have dropped out of high school. So that issue is very close to us. And over the last 10 years, the program we run in Louisville has helped over 1,000 kids get GEDs. So we knew firsthand the power of those individual stories. And so at the event KET sponsored, we had someone on the panel. And it's something we really believed in. So we got the word out to our board of directors and anybody else that we could tell about it. What are some of the challenges for people who do not have a high school degree? Degree. Well, one of the challenges is, think of it this way, my dad, I'm a Louisville kid, and when my dad came out of high school from Valley High School back in 1960, you didn't really necessarily have to have a high school degree to get a job at Ford or GE or International Harvester, those sort of blue collar jobs that people used to get themselves to the middle class. All you really needed was a good work ethic, right? Mm -hmm. But today, almost every employer that you can name in Louisville requires you to have a high school degree or a GED just to apply. Right? And so when you look at the unemployment rates for people, the unemployment rates get worse at every education level as you move down, and they're the worst for people who don't have a high school degree. And that's because there are very few jobs for people at that skill level anymore. We talked about what it means for them individually. What does having uh, a Louisville with 50,000 people who don't have a high school diploma, what does that mean for our city? Well, think about it from the mayor's perspective, right? If he's trying to be the lead economic development guy for the region, when you're trying to market Louisville to companies, the first question they ask is either about land or about people, but increasingly it's about people. So they're very, very interested in talent, and if you've got 50,000 people who are basically on the bench not able to play except at the very lowest level, well, that's not the kind of job you want the mayor to try to attract to Louisville. That's not gonna grow our economy. That's not really gonna move us forward. Right? Mm -hmm. But what that means, Candace, is we then have a challenge of trying to meet as many of those 50,000 people as we can and get them to raise their education level to get that GED. And then what we know is most of the jobs require more than that. So what we want to do is try to not make the GED an endpoint, but make that something that you use to then pole vault to the community college or some sort of professional training that can really get you one of those middle class jobs like my parents had. Are you finding when you meet those people that they really want to get there, but maybe don't either have the tools or the know-how? Well, let me talk about our youth program first. So what we've learned in working with young people is you have to connect them to a caring adult almost from the beginning when they decide they want to try to work with you, right? Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, young people have been told Sadly, by a teacher, by a parent, by a family member, you can't do it. You're never going to amount to anything. I didn't do it. Why do you need to do it? Okay. So you've got to connect them to somebody that cares and can paint the picture for them of what their future could be like if they get it. But what we've learned is once you connect kids to, to, to caring adults like that, they really get interested and want to move quickly. So luckily for us, the people that run that Youth Career Center are the same adult ed people who do that for JCPS across Jefferson County, and they're great. Right? And then they also run adult education for adults and for people that are trying to learn English as a second language. And they do terrific work, but what we know is, and we saw it in the video from KET, people are intimidated, they're nervous, they're a little bit embarrassed about it, right? The older you get, the more it's difficult to get over the fact that, boy, I'm really gonna go back into this classroom and I wasn't all that successful the first time. Mm -hmm. So the other thing adult ed people tell me is, they've gotta make the dynamic more caring, more personal, you've gotta have a sense of belonging there, and then they know they can move people educationally. Elaborate a little on Kentucky Anna Works Right Turn program. Well, this is an exciting thing for us, Candace. We've gotten two grants just this year that are giving us federal money, and we'll be able to work with 500 court-involved young people between the ages of 16 and 21. So imagine, you've got to do some bad stuff to get in the court system and to be in the juvenile detention facility or pretty close, right? Now we're going to be able to work with those 500 kids at that same youth career center I was describing. 
We're going to we're going to pair each one of those people with a career counselor, that caring adult on our staff. Mayor Fisher and Anthony are also leading the effort to try to recruit 500 mentors so that there's a one-on-one -on -one person in the community who's going to be trying to help steer that kid and be another one of those believing, caring adults that tells you what your future can be, right? So it's great. It matches up with the mayor's compassion agenda. You know, if somebody's watching this and is part of a church or a mosque or a synagogue that's looking for volunteer efforts, we would love to hear about it. We're looking for people to do this one by one from the inside out. And, you know, when we meet these kids, it's the same story over and over again. If you just give them a little bit of hope and paint their future and then show them what the path can be, it's amazing how many kids want to do the right thing and will do the right thing. It's encouraging for our oh, future. It's very exciting. It's Michael, very exciting. Thank you very much. Thank you, Candace.